Hi, welcome back to At Your Service. And as promised, these are the book recommendations for anyone who's studying respiratory therapy in the Philippines. So, before anything else, I'd like you to re- I'd like to remind you that uh, these are just book recommendations. You don't really have to buy all of them. Of course, the primary basis for your textbooks is your school syllabus or your school's course outline. So before buying any textbook, ask your instructor for the mandated or uh, recommended textbook for your different subjects because your instructor might prefer a specific textbook for that subject. So as you can see here, there are lots of books in respiratory therapy. The sad thing is most of these textbooks are not available in the Philippines. So you you, you cannot find them in uh, most Philippine bookstores, you have to order them online or borrow it from your professor and then have it photocopied. So for the first textbook, we have Egan's Fundamentals of Respiratory Care. Well, this is actually not a recommendation since this is mandatory for all students, especially in the first three years of respiratory therapy. So what does this book contain? This is essentially the Bible for all respiratory therapists because it contains the chapters for all your other subjects. Like you have here history, um, evidence-based practice, patient records, uh, infection control, ethics, applied anatomy and physiology. And of course, if there are if there is a chapter for anatomy and physiology, there should be pathophysiology. So you have here chapter four. You also have a separate chapter for patient assessment. Although I'm not I'm not recommending Egan's to be your reference for patient assessment, there's a separate textbook for that, which discusses patient assessment uh, better than Egan's. I think what's special in Egan's is chapter five, basic therapeutics. This is an entire chapter dedicated for the basic therapeutic procedures in respiratory care, like airway management, life support, humidity, aerosol, drug, uh, medical gas therapy, lung expansion, and airway clearance therapy. And there are also chapters for critical care which involves your mechanical ventilators, invasive and both, both invasive and non-invasive, and monitoring a patient in the ICU, discontinuing the mechanical ventilator, and a separate chapter for neonatal and pediatric respiratory care, which is a very, I think this is one of the hardest subject in respiratory therapy because the lack of resources. So what I did when I was studying, I used my nursing textbooks, but I found it to be well, I didn't really find it useful back then because uh, in nursing, the focus of the nursing textbooks is, well, taking care of the patient holistically. But in RT, naturally, the focus is for airway and respiratory care. And there are also sections like this one, Mini Clinic, which presents sample problems and sample solutions in a, a situation that you might encounter in the future as an intern or as an RT professional. But I don't think you will appreciate this except if you're an intern since in the first three years of RT, you don't really have much clinical exposure. There are also boxes which sometimes uh, present uh, mnemonics for you to um, remember the concepts easier. Okay, so what else? Uh, The only thing that I want for Egan's is the sample quizzes or sample questions at the end of the chapter. But unfortunately for Egan's fundamentals, it's not available. So at the end of every chapter, you only have a summary checklist which, well, summarizes all the concepts in that chapter. So please don't rely on the checklist before you check the checklist. Well, it is imperative that you read the chapter. If you want to practice on the questions, then you have to purchase the Egan's workbook, which is sold separately and intended to accompany the, well, fundamentals textbook. Am I recommending this? Mm, No, unless you are reviewing for the licensure exam. So if you're a first year or a third year student, you don't really have to buy this at this time. Okay, so what's the purpose of the workbook? This is just a quiz, a sample, um, a sample textbook. Well, it's a workbook. Another optional textbook that you can buy to accompany your Egan's textbook is Gary White, um, Basic Lab Competencies. What's wrong with my keyboard? So it looks like this. This is the, this was the edition that I used back in college. I'm not really sure if there's 
a later edition. This is the fifth edition by Gary White. So the name of the textbook is Basic Clinical Lab Competencies for Respiratory Care, an Integrated Approach. I'm not really recommending this, but this is an optional textbook if you have extra money <laughs> or if you have access to this textbook. What I did back then, I ordered this through Amazon. The advantage of this textbook is that it focuses on the technical aspect of respiratory care, much more on your equipment and the different steps or the sequence of performing different RT procedures like pulmonary function testing, ECG, phlebotomy, ABG, etc, etc. So let's let's show what it looks like. I just wish this textbook could have used um, colored photos, but uh, this isn't much an issue. So, so the photos look like this, all of them black and white. Okay, so this is for radiologic assessment. As you can see, it has plenty of photos compared to Egan's. It has more photos compared to Egan's because this, again, is for lab or for skill assessment, for skill development. So at the end of the chapter, there should be a practice. Um, yeah, there we go. Practice activities where uh, this is a summarized version of the chapter and it allows you to practice the different um, RT procedures like this. It also has a checklist which illustrates the different steps in performing a procedure. This is this is cut, but I think you get the point. This is step seven in radiologic assessment. Um, your school may or may not use this textbook in your lab subjects. Uh, back when I was teaching, back when I was teaching respiratory care, I use this textbook a lot for laboratory evaluation or for skill evaluation of my students because, well, this is readily made uh, for basic RT subjects. Your uh, main textbook is, of course, Egan's Fundamentals, but uh, optional textbooks to accompany this are your Egan's Workbook and your Gary White Basic Lab Competencies. Okay, for the next textbook, uh, this is especially for your patient assessment subjects, as I've said a while ago. Although there's a patient assessment chapter in Egan's, I don't really recommend that chapter because there is a better textbook that discusses the steps in patient assessment better. So I'm referring to Wilkins Clinical Assessment in Respiratory Care. Uh, if, it, if possible, get the latest edition. So this is an example of, or a preview rather, of the 7th edition. Uh, this was authored by Albert Hewer and Craig Scanlan. I'm not sure if I pronounced it right. Okay, so these are the contents of patient assessment. So you have, okay, so these are chapters for the patient encounter, meaning you prepare. This is even, this is even before you meet the patient face to face. And also, I think the most important here is the chapter for medical history and the interview, because uh, in your RT course you will be required to make a case study or present a case case of study later on during your internship and there are also chapters for cardiopulmonary symptoms which is very helpful in the what which are very helpful for your pathophysiology subjects <clears throat> again uh, it also has a other import, other useful chapters. Actually, all of the chapters are very important, but I think what's useful here is chapter 12, neonatal and pediatric assessment. If you don't have an access to a neonatal textbook later on, you can refer to uh, Wilkins for pediatric assessment. And all and this this textbook, I assure you, is very good. Okay, so let's look at the example of the content. The text, the font size, and the font style is very much similar to Egan's. Uh, it's also easy to follow. It's not really painful to the eyes. And it also contains um, figures like this one to help you understand the chapters easier. And here, the assessment questions. So at the end of every chapter, you have sample questions like this, which where you can practice if you understood the chapter. And um, the answers, the key answers for these questions are found at the appendix or at the end of the textbook. 
So back when I was studying, we used this a lot. And my professor, uh, who was a pulmonologist and intensivist, used this textbook a lot because, uh, as I said, because this isn't only a, an assessment textbook, but it also has chapters which can um, help you in the critical care uh, units when you will be an intern or when you're still working, when you start working, rather. Uh, there are also chapters for bronchoscopy, cardiac output measurement, vascular. In short, this is also useful for your subject in your third year, which is hemodynamic monitoring and critical care. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how much is this textbook? Let's look at it at Amazon. Okay, so in Amazon, this is $40. Oh, for rent. Okay, so if you prefer a used textbook, this is around $72 US dollars plus $30 shipping. But if you... Why is the difference low? The difference is not that much. If I were you, I would I would purchase the brand. So if, if the price difference is just four dollars, then I will go for the new one. So the new the, a new copy of uh, Wilkins textbook would cost you seventy six dollars plus thirty dollars shipping fee. So what I did when I was a student, I borrowed my professor's textbook and have it photocopied and softbound for my personal use. <clears throat> So the next textbook on my recommendation is this one, Cardiopulmonary Anatomy and Physiology by Terry DeHardens. So the purpose of this textbook is for your anatomy and physiology subjects, much, um, especially for your cardiopulmonary anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology. Uh, so as I've said, so as you've seen a while ago, you also have a chapter in Egan's discussing um, the different cardiopulmonary diseases and cardiopulmonary anatomy and physiology. But uh, when compared to this textbook, the discussion in Egan's is much less and somehow difficult to follow, difficult to understand. I appreciate this better. I appreciate the presentation of this textbook better compared to Egan's. So the book is essentially dedicated to the cardiopulmonary system. So as you can see here, plenty of sections discussing the anatomy of all the different structures. And uh, the, the discussion on ventilation was better on this book compared to Egan's. That's what I remember when I was in college. Also, this, this textbook can also accompany your ABGs since there is discussion of the oxygen and carbon dioxide transport, ABG regulation, ventilation and perfusion, relationships and control of ventilation and also neonatal and pediatric assessment or neonatal pediatric respiratory care since this you have a chapter dedicated for fetal development of the cardiopulmonary system and uh, also a chapter for electrophysiology which will help you understand ECG better so you can combine this with um, Wilkins patient assessment for you to understand ECG better. And, oh, look, there's also a chapter for ECG interpretation. Although uh, there are plenty of figures in Wilkins um, showing the different dysrhythmia so you can practice with your ECG skills. Okay, so what's what I like most about this textbook is the diagrams, especially when you are studying pathophysiology it's not enough to look at words or you will get bored if you're just looking at words. So looking at diagrams or if you so um, seeing diagrams like the ones in this textbook will help you understand pathophysiology better. Okay, more things that I like in this book better than Egan's is this one. The practice questions at the end of the chapter. So you can challenge yourself or you can practice on the chapters if you understood them well there are also multiple choice questions i can't see them all here in this preview but as you can see here the illustrations are better clearer and 
um, easier to follow, easier to understand, and you also have sample um, situations. What's good here is for Terra de Hardens, there are also sample SOAPs in every chapter. Let's see if we can find some. I really like this textbook. I'm not, I'm not biased, but I like this textbook. This textbook has helped me a lot when I was reviewing for the licensure exam. I use uh, the sample questions at the end of every chapter to practice and the figures, of course, to help me memorize these uh, concepts. Okay, we cannot see all the pages in this textbook, but I assure you, but I assure you, there are pages in the Hardens where you can find sample SOAPs or sample respiratory care plans. If you'll be ever, if you if you'll be required in your third year subjects to make an SOAP, you can use uh, Terry the Hardens as a basis or as a reference. Okay. So now the next question is, how much is this textbook in Amazon's? Clinical manifestations, which is oh, this is the latest edition. The latest edition is about eighty dollars, eighty dollars with thirty dollars shipping fee. A while ago, we've seen this is the edition um, that is very familiar to me. This is what I used way back in two thousand thirteen. So this cost sixty dollars and thirty shipping fee for the new one, one hundred dollars. Wait, why is this more expensive than the latest edition? Hmm. That's weird. Okay, so if the 8th edition costs less than the 6th edition, then go for the 8th edition. Anyway, uh, this is a practical textbook. I mean, it is practical to buy this textbook because you can use this even when you are reviewing for the licensure exam. I don't think there will be a major difference after two or three years. You can still use this in the future as a reference. And even now, even now that I am practicing my profession, I'm still, I still find myself going back to this textbook. Okay, for the next textbook, as you can see here, we have plenty of textbooks. You're look, we're looking at respiratory care exam by Persing. This is a review material. I don't really recommend students to buy review textbooks at this stage uh, it is most important to study first the textbook before you go on with review books i recommend review books once you graduate rt or once you are starting with your internship but if you're if you're a first year or third year student don't buy this yet anyway for the next textbook where, where was it? Oh yeah, pill beams. So the next textbook is for mechanical ventilation, pill beams, mechanical ventilation, physiological and clinical applications. Again, uh, Egan's has a chapter for mechanical ventilation, but the purpose of Egan's is just to introduce mechanical ventilation to you. A proper um, textbook for MechVent is pill beams. This is a sample of the sixth edition. Okay, so what I like about pill beams is the presentation. I mean, the discussion on MacVent is much more complete compared to other textbooks. I appreciate the way that this textbook um, explained the mechanics of mechanical ventilation. So what's good in here is that um, aside from the theoretical aspect of mechanical ventilation, it also has chapters for the technical aspect. So for chapter two, for example, how ventilators work, it explains the different parts of the mechanical ventilator and how it, well, how it works or how it functions. Also explains how a breath is delivered, how the air moves within the mechanical ventilator, which is very helpful for a RT for an RT student. We also have the indications for mechanical ventilation, how to select the ventilator and the mode for which you have to deliver it, and initial ventilator settings. So as you can see here, it's a complete guide in mechanical ventilation. It's a little bit heavy, 500 pages. So it's um, a less thicker than Egan's, but I assure you this is a complete textbook for mechanical ventilation. It also ex explains um, um, some diseases that are associated with mechanical ventilation, your, like your VAP, 
um, ARDS. And if I'm not mistaken, there's also a chapter for pediatric and neonatal. There, there we go. Okay, so for chapter 22, you have neonatal and pediatric mechanical ventilation, which is a perfect reference for your neonatal and pediatric subjects on your third year. And there are also special techniques in ventilatory support like APRV, high frequency oscillatory ventilation. Where's NAVA? Oh, there. We have NAVA at page 507. Okay, so all in all, this is an excellent textbook for your mechanical ventilation subjects. Take note, you have basic mechanical ventilation and advanced mechanical ventilation. And from time to time, you can use this as a reference when you start on your internship or when you start working. Are there sample questions at the end of the chapter? Yes, it has. There are practice questions at the end of every chapter, so you can review them for your licensure exam later on. Okay, let's try to look at some samples. Ah, it's raining outside that's making the Wi-Fi work slow here. So these are sample questions and the key answers are at the appendix of the textbook. So again, just like your Wilkins assessment and the Hardens, uh, this textbook also has sample questions for you to practice on. This improves retention of the subject. So. I love textbooks that has practice questions at the end of the chapter. Okay, so let's look how much is this textbook, Amazon. When I was a student, I didn't have to buy this one because I, I only borrowed my professor's textbook. So for Amazon, the seventh edition is $87. $87. Oh, for rent? No. Okay, so in Amazon, the newest edition, which is seventh edition, could be bought at $105 plus $30 shipping fees. But if you're okay with the 7th edition, you can buy it for $100. So the price isn't really that different. Okay, so you can buy an ebook version of this textbook at $69.83. So if you have a tablet or if you have a large screen, you can buy this one. Or again, if you wanted to copy what I did back in college, if you have a friend or if you have a professor that has who has a copy of this textbook, you can borrow it from him and then have it photocopy just for personal use. A reminder to every, to every student, it's allowed to photocopy the textbook, but you're not allowed to sell it. So if ever you're browsing for respiratory textbooks online and you might see this book, Respiratory Care Calculations by David Chang. Huh, I'm not really recommending this. You don't have, you don't have to buy a separate textbook just to learn the different calculations or equations in respiratory care. Frankly, uh, you will learn the calculations in every subject that you will take. Like for example, this one, compliance and resistance calculations already covered in other textbooks. If you have Egan's or if you have Pilby, I don't really recommend you to buy this textbook unless of course, if you're, if you're swimming in money, go ahead. Now you're, you're also looking at this one, respiratory notes by Gary White. Okay, if you're a student, if you haven't graduated or if you haven't started with your internship, don't buy this pocketbook yet if you're not an intern or if you're not working. So as I've said, the purpose of pocket guides is uh, to present to you or to help you remember the things that you learned in school. But since you are still learning, it's impractical to buy something like this that summarizes everything. Although this helps you for short-term recall, uh, it doesn't necessarily help you understand the concept or theory behind it. So don't buy this yet, okay? So another pocketbook is PDQ. Where is it? Here. Mosby's PDQ is again a pocketbook. So just like respiratory care notes, don't buy this yet unless you're starting with your internship or unless you are working. Are these pocketbooks useful for reviewing for your licensure exam? Uh, no, no. Why? Because uh, there are you have a separate textbook for review, like this one, Gary Persing. If you're reviewing for the board exam, use this, not the pocketbook. The purpose of the pocketbook is for short-term recall. It, it doesn't really explain the concept. It doesn't um, doesn't have sample pages or test question for you to practice on. So, if you are watching this video and you are reviewing for the licensure exam, I'd rather I'd rather have you purchase this than the pocketbook. So let's look an example, look at, at sample um, pages of this textbook. This is for oxygen and medical gas therapy. What's good with um, Gary Persing's textbook is that 
it has pre-test question and it has post-test questions, both for your um, CRT and RRT exams. Although in the Philippines, we don't have CRT exam, we only have the registered RT exam. You can use both CRT and RRT questions at the appendix for your review. It also has um, rational. It explains why the answer is like that. So again, reminder, if you're a student, if you haven't graduated yet, don't buy this book yet. What else? You might be tempted to buy Dana Oaks Pocket Guides. There are lots of uh, pocket guides by Dana Oaks. These are excellent pocket books. Anyway, I'm not saying these pocketbooks are useless or inaccurate, but my point here is since you're still studying, you're still trying to understand the concepts, you do not have to buy these pocketbooks at this time. So in case you're, you're curious, Dana Oaks has lots of pocketbooks, one for respiratory care, one for ABG, where is it? This one. And another pocketbook for neonatal pediatric, and MacVent. There's a pocketbook for MacVent. There we go. So Dana Oaks has lots of pocketbooks, which you can use after graduation. Okay, so next textbook for recommendation is this one, Neonatal and Pediatric Respiratory Care by Brian Walsh. So we're looking at the ebook version of this textbook. When I was in college, we didn't exactly have a reference for neonatal and pediatric care, we were only using, if I remember it correctly, EGANS. And the problem with EGANS is because it is, it is an introductory textbook, we didn't really understand the concepts in neonatal and pediatric care way back then. So, because the younger generations of Filipino respiratory therapists are way more informed than us, I am recommending this textbook for you to use. So this is like your Terry de Hardin's textbook, published by the Elsevier um, Publishing House. So it's a pretty much complete textbook for neonatal pediatric care. It's a partner book for your um, Terry D. Hardin's textbook. So aside from uh, pathophysiology, there are also respiratory procedures for neonatal and pediatric patients. So we have the assessment of the newborn, uh, monitoring the neonatal and pediatric patient, bronchoscopy, ABG analysis, and specifically your oxygen administration aerosols, airway clearance, etc., etc. So this is an excellent, this is an excellent reference for your young patients, and of course your section for the neonatal and pediatric disorders, your pathophysiology of the different disorders in children. So this is the common Waterloo of most Filipino respiratory therapists, number one, because the resources for neonatal and pediatric care is pretty much scarce. And the exposure to respiratory care management is not really, it's not really adequate for Filipino respiratory therapists because uh, the neonatal ICU is dominated by nurses and medical clerks or medical interns. And the RT, well, the RT's role becomes just technical and not of the therapist to be honest that's what i observed but if your if your hospital has a different protocol then i will appreciate your comment and write them down below so other contents of this textbook is pediatric sleep disordered breathing which is not really discussed in egan's and airway disorders and parenchymal lung diseases asthma in children and disorders of pleura etc etc so as you can see here it's a complete textbook guide it's a complete guide for neonatal and pediatric patients. Now, the price, the ebook is at 3,420 pesos for the ebook. Now, let's look at the paperback price. In Amazon, the book could be bought at $80. So this is the fifth edition, right? So the fifth edition could be bought at $80 at a shipping fee of $30. This is the edition that I'm really familiar with, the third edition. Oh, that's how old I am. Anyway, a new, a new, ed a new copy of the third edition would cost you forty dollars. Okay, so one more book that you might encounter or um, your peers might recommend to you is um, Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine. As its name implies, this is for medical students. You can use it as a reference but i'm not really recommending it because the way it presents or it the way it discusses the pathophysiology of the disease is in the perspective of a physician which is 
well, actually you're not. You're not a physician. You're not studying as a medical student. So this is an overkill. Remember that medical students study the whole um, body systems, but respiratory therapists only focus on the cardiopulmonary neuromuscular system. So if you're going to buy this textbook, remember this is this is um, heavy. This is actually heavy because it has two volumes, which makes it... Anyway, this is not just for anatomy and physiology. It also has discussions on the diagnosis, differential diagnosis, and medical management of these diseases, which is beyond the scope of a respiratory therapist. Remember, as a respiratory therapist, we do not diagnose a disease. We only perform the tests for the physician to make a diagnosis. It's the physician who makes a diagnosis, not the RT. And the medical management is different from the RT management. So purchasing a copy of the internal medicine textbook is an overkill. Well, you can use it as an optional textbook or as an additional textbook for your professional subjects, but I'm not really recommending it. It's impractical. So for your anatomy and physiology subject, this depends. If you're a graduate of healthcare strand, like for example, you're a graduate of Lorma Senior High School, they have this healthcare strand under the STEM um, strand, which is under the academic track. And this strand specifically has subjects that are dedicated for future healthcare students. But if you're a graduate of the STEM, I'm not really sure if they have anatomy and physiology subjects in the STEM strands. But anyway, if you're looking for an excellent textbook for your basic anatomy and physiology, I am recommending the um, Principles of Anatomy and Physiology by Gerard Tortora. So it looks like this. So this is an excellent um, textbook for anatomy and physiology because it's complete. The illustrations are um, well understood. I mean, easy, easy understood and the discussion and and the discussion and the way it explains the physiology is very easy to understand. So it costs 90 for the ebook and for the brand new book could be bought at 60, oh, sorry, 56.94 dollars. Although I actually acquired mine, but actually you can buy this in Shopee. If I remember, I saw a copy in Shopee. They have a copy in Shopee for this one. So I saw a copy in shopee.ph and I'm not sure if this is legit though. It says, oh, so this is an ebook. So this is an ebook for the principles of anatomy and physiology. And the ebook only costs, wow, 39 pesos. Okay, so that is the end of this video. I hope I have presented you with some viable options for your um, references are for your textbooks. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel at your service and share this to your friends. See you on the next video.